does, brother. Amen. <laughs> you are his people. Come on. Come on. Amen. Amen. The sheep of his pasture. That's good, brother. He is mindful of you. Amen. You say, well, you know, there's just a few of us, brother Persinger. Now, I want to tell you something. Even the Bible talked about Priscilla and Aquila and the church, the church, the church that was in their house. Yeah. Amen. 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 I want to tell you, you commit yourself to the church of the living God. I know there is the church, amen, amen which encompasses amen. all true believers, amen, that are washed in the blood. And I want to did this thing of the church, the local body, the local church, is not man's concoction. That's right. This is not man's ideas. Amen. It's the Holy Ghost that has established the local church. Yeah, that's right. And in the local church, amen, the Holy Ghost wants to minister to you, feed you, nourish you. He cares for you. I know he's a personal God, and I know at home or abroad in the vehicle, wherever we are, he said he would never leave us and he would never forsake us. But he said for us to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. He said when two or three are gathered in my name, I will Amen. be there. Amen. The Holy Ghost spoke to John. Amen. Jesus told him, oh, uh, that it was uh, 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 Christ that was walking in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Amen. Read it in Revelation. Amen. What was those golden candlesticks? Come on. It was the churches. Yeah. Jesus yes. is here. Amen. And he's here because of you. And he's here to minister to you. Thank you. And I want to tell you, yeah. when your pastor stands behind this pulpit, I, I know Brother Josh. Amen. And uh, I, I, I know me. I mean, any true man of God, he, Brother Josh, you know, he, he doesn't uh, uh, just go to the book back there with that date on it. Amen. And say, this is the sermon for this Sunday. Yeah. Do you do that, Brother? No, sir. <laughs> Amen. Right. Amen. He don't just type in on Google sermon for oh. April so and so. You know what I preach today. Oh. Some folks may do that. Oh, yeah. I want to tell you something. God wants to speak to His people. Amen. And God has chosen to talk to you and speak to you. Amen. Through the office of the, the ministry. Amen. Your pastor. The evangelist. It's a supernatural thing. God gets involved. Amen. 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 And uh, when I left here last night, I didn't have a clue what I was going to preach to. Yeah. Amen. All day, you know, just crying out, God, what do you want to say to this people? God, I don't know the needs, Lord. I don't know the individuals. God, you care. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I don't know a lot of your names, but I begin to pray for your faces. You know, I know who you are. Lord. I can't call some of your names. Amen. God, you care about that individual. Yeah. Amen. You know where they're at. Minister, speak to them, yeah. God. Give yeah. them ears to hear yeah. what your spirit would say oh. unto the church. Amen. Amen. Right. And I, I want to tell you, it's supernatural. It is supernatural. How that, you know, brother uh, Mark, how many times, you know, you go to a church, you go to preach, and God speaks to your heart. Yeah. I mean, he makes it real to you what you're to speak. He's faithful. Yeah. Yeah. You know why he does it? Because he cares about you. Amen. I believe God wants to say something to you tonight. Yes, he does. Amen. In spite of me. Amen. It's not my ability. Amen. Nothing in me, but it's because he cares for you. Yeah, Amen. that's good, brother. We need to hear that. To he wants to minister Thank to you. God. Amen. God, Amen. give us ears to hear. Good. This person here testified tonight. I'm thankful to God for his goodness Amen. and his mercies, his Amen. faithfulness. Come on, sister. He's, it's new every morning. Oh, God. God. God cares. Yes. And, uh, you know, if he cares about me, then I know he cares about you. I'm just thankful yeah. God, that he's mindful 
and that he never gave up on us. Come on. Oh, Lord. He brought me out of a horrible pit and out of a miry place. Yes. He knew where I was at, and yet he reached way down for me. And I'm just thankful that he never gave us your way. Glorify God in your body 
and in your spirit, which are God's. Amen. You know, I think at times we forget. And it's vital for us to allow the Spirit of God to remind us. Amen. It's vital for us to keep it fresh in our minds that we belong to Him. Yes. We're not our own. Right. I want to tell you something. God takes care of His own. Yes, yes. Amen. Would you pray with us tonight? Amen. God, we thank you for your love to us. We thank you for the purchase. Oh, price that you paid. We thank you, Lord, oh, that you received us unto yourself. Make it real to this people tonight, your people. We believe you for it in Jesus' name. And the church said, amen. amen. Ye are not your own. You don't belong to yourself. Amen. Uh, you know, when Brother Bruce goes to the auction and he buys a car and he pays money for it well it belongs to him i mean he can take that car and take a sledgehammer to it if he wants to yeah. that's his business yeah. he can do with it what he wants to do amen but when he sells that car it no longer belongs to him yeah. amen i know uh brother uh, uh the pool company i guess bought a truck today yeah. amen and uh, you know now it belongs to the company. It really belongs to God. Amen. That's right. But uh, you know whoever you bought it from, Amen. They don't have any jurisdiction over it anymore. No, they don't. They amen. Don't. If they would have said, "We're gonna, we're gonna let you buy this truck," Amen. But uh, you know you can't drive it before seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> uh, we're gonna, we're gonna let you uh, buy this truck, but but uh, you know you can't use it on Fridays. I mean, you'd say, oh, we'll go on down the road. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Because if we buy it, we're going to need to be able to have jurisdiction over the use of it. We don't know what the future might hold. And with this truck, we need it to, amen, to serve our purposes. Amen. Yeah. Well, I want to tell you something. Amen. When Jesus purchased you and he bought you, uh, he takes jurisdiction over what is his own. We can't say, okay, Lord. Hey, I'm yours. You bought me with your blood. But, amen, Friday nights are mine. You bought me with your blood. Amen, but, Lord, you know I, I'm not yours till 7 o'clock in the morning. Amen. You know, I want to tell you, folks, we got to realize the purchase. Christ has been paid. Amen. We belong to him. First Peter 1 and 18, he said, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things and silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Amen. You don't belong to this world anymore. Amen. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus, born of another world, and you belong to him. Amen. Some people say, well, you know, but 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 we're human and we're flesh, and you know, we're gonna act certain ways because uh, you know well, I'm an Irishman or I'm this or I'm that. That's just in, in my nature. I want to tell you folks when you get born again and he purchases you out of this world. Amen. He makes you a new creature in Christ Jesus. All things pass away. And behold, all things become new. And you don't have to live after the flesh any longer. Amen. Amen. You can tell the devil I don't have to. Amen. I belong to Jesus now. Amen. He is my Lord. He is my master. Amen. Oh, this is real, folks. Yes, he is, brother. Amen. He said, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Amen. You're no longer under bondage to the flesh. You're no longer under bondage to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. You're no longer under bondage to your passions. Amen. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Master. He is the possessor. He is the one that we belong to. Amen. And that we take permission from. Amen. We belong to him. And that's a good thing. He's a good master. Yes. Amen. I uh I just 
meditating one day, you know, about how I belong to the Lord and how he saved me. He went out of the bondage of this world, and I don't know if it was a dream or a vision or what, but I just I just pictured my wife, and it just came to me. It wasn't a, a choice thought, but uh, you know that she, it's like she had been kidnapped and taken to a, a far country, a third world country, yes. and was in bondage there. Come on. And uh, I found out where she was. And I traveled and sought for her. Amen. And I, I found her and I made a deal to purchase her. Yeah. Oh. I, I, I believe, amen, uh, when I can come into the place where she's at uh, and I, I make a transaction to buy her back, uh, amen, I, I believe it would please her well. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> I, I believe, amen, that, that uh, uh, she would be delighted, amen, that I had found her, that I had purchased her, amen, that I was going to take her home. Amen. Folks, I want you to know we got to see this thing rightly. Oh, sin entered in. Oh, and man oh, went his own way. But Jesus sought us out. And he bought us. And we were awakened to the reality that our Creator, the of our soul gave his life and purchased us with his own blood. I'm telling you, amen, it ought to make a mummy shout. Oh, to think about what Jesus has done. He's not a tyrant. Amen. He is a, he is a good master. Yes. Good shepherd. Yes, sir. He knows best. Yes. You can trust him. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You don't have to be afraid to follow him. Yes. 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 Amen. I don't think since Persinger could have been afraid to follow me. Yes. Amen. Come on, honey. We're going this way. Get to, woo -hoo, let's get out of here. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yeah, that's right. You're not your own. That's right. Jesus said in Luke 9, the Bible says he said to them all. There's that little three letter word again. He said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Did you know the devil's not your greatest enemy? Your greatest enemy is that flesh. Your greatest enemy is yourself. And he delivered us. Amen. From the tyrant of self. Oh, that we can be free to do the will of God. Amen. Real freedom is not doing what you want to do. That's right. Real freedom is the ability to do what we ought to do. That's right. Amen. That's freedom. Take up his cross daily and follow me. Whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. What does it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? We're not our own Amen. to make our own decisions. The Bible says in Proverbs 14 and 12, there's a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Amen. Yes, come on. Why did you come to God? Is God an, uh, is God an end or a means? Come on. Did you come to God to get what you wanted? Amen. Or did you come to Him and surrender and say, Lord, from this day forward, it's not what I want anymore. Whatever you want, I trust you. I belong to you. You purchased me. Amen. Matthew 7 and 21. He said, Not everyone that saith, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done wonderful works, many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I want to tell you, folks, man's will, no matter how good it may 
may seem is iniquity. Amen. Amen. Oh, we can't just decide for ourselves what we think is right. Amen. How we think. Oh, we can think wrong. Oh, it's not what he thinks. It's having the mind of Christ. It's doing the will of God. Uh-huh. I remember before we went to Huffman to pastor. I had been administrator of a Christian school for eight years. Felt like the Lord and was finished with us there. We resigned all of our positions, associate pastor and administrator of the school, and just wanted to do the will of God. I was offered a pastor in Colorado. And I tell you what, I about leaped out of my skin. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> And uh, I went to Colorado, preached at a youth camp, and, uh, you know, just, I, I committed. When I was called to preach, God, I'll walk through any door that you open up. Amen. And, uh, and so I was going to Colorado to pastor. But that was my decision. Yeah. As I began to pray and seek the will of God, something didn't connect. Amen. And I wanted to go. I mean, there's elk in Colorado. For yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, there's trout streams there. Uh, you know, I mean, there's there's a lot of deer, not just a few, and they're big. Yeah. Amen. They're big, and there's mountains there. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And when it's 80 degrees in Colorado Springs, you can look up on the mountain and see the snow. You know, I mean, when it's hot, you can drive 45 minutes, amen, to get above that timber line, and it's crisp and dry air and cool. And uh, I, I, I thought that'd be a pretty good place, you know, to work for God. <laughs> amen. I wanted to win souls there. Yeah. Amen. I wanted to preach there. I wanted to do the will of God there. Yeah. But that wasn't the will of God. Yeah, come on. Man. And I wrestled with that thing. I struggled with that thing. I mean, I went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Amen. But I tell you what, I had on my face before God, I had to die to my own will and say, God, not my will, but yours be done. I don't belong to myself. I'm not my own. It's not up to me to make these decisions. I don't know what the future is, but by your grace, I'm going to follow you. Folks, we got to do the will of God. We belong to him. He must be Lord and Master. We don't make our own decisions. You get in trouble making your own decisions for us. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. We don't go where we want to go. We don't live where we want to live. We don't work where we want to work. We don't go to church where we want to go to church. Amen. We belong to Him. We don't marry who we want to marry. That's right. That's amen. Right. A lot of young folks get in trouble, amen, marrying who they want to marry. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. They allow their emotions to go out front, uh, and, uh, you know, those feelers are out, uh, and uh, they, they uh, develop a relationship, and then all of a sudden, amen, something happens in their mind, and they feel like this is the one, and uh, their heart's smitten, and uh, they've not really sought the will of God. Come on, I'm going to tell you something. Amen. We must let Jesus go out front. Yes, Amen. Amen. I want to tell you. Amen. Don't enter into a relationship. Oh, that Jesus is not directing and guiding uh, and, and commanding uh, and going before. And we know this is not my will. This is God's will. We can trust him. He knows what we don't know. That's right. You don't know somebody till you marry them. Amen. And sometimes you don't even know them. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's right. Yes, sir. But God knows. He knows. Amen. We can be led by the Holy Ghost. Jeremiah 10 and 23, the Bible says, O oh Lord, I know the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. Folks, we can't make our own decisions. We've got to be dependent upon him. We are to pray about everything. Amen. Be led by the Holy Ghost about everything. Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Always be open for the Spirit of God to check us. Amen. Always make sure, amen, that we're following in his footsteps. He said, if any man is going to come after me, he must deny himself, take up the cross, and 
follow me? Are you following Jesus through your day? Amen. I want to tell you, he won't lead you into sin, folks. He won't lead you, amen, where he's not going to keep you. He won't lead you uh, into, into a bad attitude. He won't lead you to be angry. He won't lead you, amen, to do things uh, that's not bringing glory and honor unto him. We belong to him. Amen. His grace to follow. Preach, brother. Yes, sir. Amen. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, know ye not? That you're the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you, folks. We don't belong to ourselves. That's right. Jim Elliot said he's no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Amen. amen. You never go wrong giving yourself to God. You never go wrong, amen, turning things over to God and letting him be master and letting him be Lord. Leonard Raven, he'll often quote in this poem, it will not make much difference, friend, a hundred years from now, whether you live in a stately mansion or a floating river scow, whether the clothes you wear are tailor-made or just pieced together somehow, whether you eat big steaks or beans and cake, hundred years from now. It will not matter your bank account or the make of car you drive, for the grave will claim all your riches and fame and the things for which you strive. There's a deadline that we all must meet and no one will show up late. Yes. It won't matter then all the places you've been. Each one will keep that date. You'll only have an eternity. Amen. What you've given away on earth. When you go to the grave, you can only save the things of eternal worth. Yeah. Amen. What matters, friend, the earthly gain for which some men will bow? For your destiny will be sealed, you see, a hundred years from now. I want to tell you, folks, we can trust Him. Yeah. Oh, that we would keep our eyes upon on, Him. Man. Oh, that we would hold loosely to the things of this life. I want to tell you, we are not yeah. our own. Our possessions are not our own. Yes, sir. We get to attack yeah. them. And things can get a hold of our heart. Yeah, Jesus yeah. told the church at Ephesus, Hey, I know your works and your labor and your patience. I know you tried those that say they're apostles and are not. You found them liars. You born, you've had patience. And for my name's sake, you've labored and you've not fainted. But I've got someone against you because you've left your first love. I'm not your first anymore. I'm not Lord anymore. It's not about me anymore. I'll tell you, folks, when it's all about him, it's easy to give him yes. those things that belong Amen. to him. Amen. Yes, sir. That's true. That Amen. 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 He said in Romans 12 and 1, I beseech you therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which he is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. That's what we're to do every day. The will of God, not our will, His will. Amen. And by the Holy Ghost, He's given to us to prove what is His will. Amen. He's given us His word. Anything that's not in harmony with the word of God is not the will of God. Amen. We've got to go to the word of God. Know the word of God. Let him lead us uh, by his word and by his spirit. Uh, and know, uh, amen, that God works through authority. Yes. Amen. Amen. God leads us through authority. Yes, he does. Amen. amen. Come on, preach. The Bible says obey them that have the rule over you. Yes. Amen. And submit yourselves for they watch for your souls That's right. as they that must give account. Amen. I believe that would include parents. But I want to tell you that scripture was not written to parents. That scripture was written to the local church. And it's talking about spiritual authority in the church. Hey, uh, God is going to speak to you through that spiritual authority that he places you under. Amen. God's going to give direction through that spiritual authority. I want to tell you folks, oh, if we'll learn to yield our will to the will of God and prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God and seek out the principles and precepts and the statutes and the judgments of God's word and understand that he cares and he loves us and he's given an under shepherd to guide and to lead the flock. Hey, hey, God will fight your battles. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. 
He said, well, I don't know, you know, if he's hearing from God. I don't know if, uh, you know, he really cares about my feelings. I don't know. I want to tell you, God cares about you. God cares about your feelings. Uh, Amen. And if you'll come under and you'll submit yourself, amen, to the word of God and to the will of God, I want to tell you, God will reprove kings for your sakes. If you'll be willing to do it God's way, amen, you'll be, then God will guide you. He will lead you. He will work in your life. To accomplish his eternal purpose. Yes, Amen. I remember my <gasps> dorm pastor, Brother Robert Holmes, great man of God. And uh, he was a hippie that a holiness preacher in a little church with just a few handfuls of people. Amen. Brother Holmes come in off of a motorcycle with long hair, sit on the back pew. Amen. That preacher preached holiness. And Brother Holmes cried out to God and surrendered his will to God. Amen. He began to get in the Word of God, learn the principles of the Word of God, made some decisions to side with authority. As long as that authority did not go Amen. In direct opposition to the higher authority. Come on. I believe Amen. that. He was going to submit himself to that authority. I believe that. Amen. Come on. And he now. said there were some trials that I went through. Yes. Him and his wife was at Bible school one time. And uh, they wanted to go home for Thanksgiving. And uh, they come Thanksgiving week. They was out of school. And uh, some of the students had already left, headed for home. But he knew that, you know, you're supposed to fill out a certain form. He had agreed to do that before you left out of town and went home. Other people had already gone. Just kind of an understanding. But he felt like he needed to fill out the form because that's what he was supposed to do. Right. He filled out the form, met with the dean of students. And the dean of students said, you know, if you read the rules, there's a rule that you can't go home on a revival week. Now we're going to be in revival that week. Or this week. And uh, you can't go home. He said, I tried to plead with him and uh, explain to him that my wife's brother had come in from the service. She hadn't seen him in a long length of time. And he's only going to be home a few days and uh, she won't be able to see him. But he wouldn't listen to me. He said, That's the rules. That's it. You can't go. He said, How can I go tell my wife? <laughs> and we couldn't go home and have seen her brother. But he said, I submitted myself. I went to my wife and told her, we can't go, honey. He said, she ran crying, laid herself across the bed and bawled like a baby. And he told us, boys, in that service that we had there in the dorms that day, he said something took place in our lives through that experience that transformed us forever. Yes. God worked in our lives. God, through that experience, broke some things that were they not broken that couldn't have been in the ministry. Uh-huh. And then I want to tell you something. God knows best, folks. Yeah. And uh, if it's God's will, let me tell you something. God can turn Amen. Circumstances. Yes, he can. Amen. If, if if the preacher is standing in the way between you and the will of God, God can kill the preacher. Yes, he can. I'm telling you. If you'll submit yourself to the word of God, and you'll stand on the word of God, and you'll be willing to, you don't belong to yourself. You belong to God. And you'll be willing to do it in God's way. And I want to tell you, God will get involved in your life. Amen. You'll fight your battles. Amen. Do you belong to God? If you belong to God, then everything you have belongs to God. That's right. Amen. 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 When you buy that car, amen, the seats go with it. Amen. The tires go with it. Come on. Everything in that vehicle, amen, it goes with it. And I want to tell you, everything you have in your possession, if you belong to God, 
that belongs to God. I remember a number of years ago, amen, somebody heard that went to our church. They bought us a Suburban. It was a nice Suburban, just maybe five or six years old, but it was low mileage, had a custom paint job. I mean, it was a, a cream puff. And uh, on a Sunday, they give us the keys. Ooh, I'll tell you what. Amen. What a blessing it was to our family and to my boys. Amen. I told them, no feet. Amen. On these seats. You understand? Amen. Well, you know, we're going to be a wise steward of God's possession. Right. Amen. Right. I take care of this thing. And, uh, but, but you know, amen, it wasn't very long. Maybe just a week or two we had it. And I went out to get in it from a Sunday morning service. I remember it was a Sunday afternoon after church. And I saw down the side of that suburban, it was like somebody had took a screwdriver or a key or something. And just, I mean, it was layers of paint. And it was, you could just see the flakes were in flakes. And oh, I was sick. I mean, you know, it wasn't hardly worth continuing to live. <laughs> I mean, maybe you never felt that way before. Amen. But I mean, it was just, it was ruined. The whole, I mean, it was, it, it was terrible. It was terrible. Yeah. I didn't even want to eat lunch. I was sick. And I realized, oh, God, I thank you. I thank you, God, yes, for exposing, God. amen, this in my life. This ain't my vehicle, it's your vehicle. Yes. And if you want to allow somebody, amen, to run a screwdriver down the side of it, God, that's your business. You can do it whatever you want to do, God. Yes. Amen. You just loaned it, let me use it. Amen. And I, I, I give it to you, God. Amen. If you want me to pick those children up, amen, if they got mud all over them, or get other things all over the seat. It don't matter, God. It's yours. It ain't mine. Amen. I'm telling you, things can attach themselves to your life until it becomes idolatry. But let me tell you, folks, we don't belong to ourselves. Our possessions are not our own. Your clothes are not yours. Your car is not yours. Your house is not yours. Your time is not yours. Amen. Your future is not yours. Your children are not your children heritage of the Lord. Yeah. They belong to your spouse is not yours. We must give everything to God and keep it that way. Amen. It's very easy for things to attach themselves to your life. Amen. And you know what? Amen. We think it's somebody else that's the problem. Amen. When they begin to take advantage of something in our life. Amen. They begin to cause some frustration or some anger. Amen. Because they're not respecting our time like they ought. They're supposed to be or sure not. And I'm busy and I get out and do it. It ain't your time. It's God's time. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. It's not your possession. It's God's possession. Amen. Acts 4 32. In the early church said the multitude of them that believe were of one heart and of one soul. Yes. You know what that one heart and one soul was? Don't you Christ? Mm. Amen. It's not everybody having Josh Heritage's mind. Yeah. Amen. It's everybody having the mind of Christ. Amen. Yes, amen. It's getting in one mind and one accord with him. And when we do, amen, that there's a love, amen, that permeates the atmosphere. And there is a spirit of loyalty and submission and humility. Amen. There is the spirit of Christ that makes a difference. Amen. The world knows that we're his disciples. Neither said any of them that all of the things which he possessed was his own. Amen. God owned it all. Amen. We can say that. I want to tell you, folks, there's going to be times you've got to take your possessions and, and offer them on that altar. There'll be times you've got to take your emotions and offer them on that altar. Amen. Amen. You must become a living sacrifice. You are not your own. Are you following Jesus? Does he guide your thoughts? The Bible tells us to bring every thought in subjection to the obedience of Christ. He tells you what to think. That's true. Amen. 
and you'll obey him, I'll tell you it'll help you, Lord. <laughs> yes. If you'll think what he wants you to think, it'll help you. Amen. There will be fiery darts. Amen. There will be those thoughts that fly. Amen. They'll try to carry you this way and that way. But if you'll bring every thought into subjection to the obedience of Christ, and you will have the mind of Christ, and I'm going to tell you, you won't have to worry about your words. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Amen. You can't say it if you've not thought it. Oh, amen. It comes through the mind before it comes out the mouth, folks. Amen. And you're going to be judged by every idle word that you speak. You know what that means, every idle word? Well, I didn't really mean that. I, I, I didn't really, you know, I didn't really, I didn't really mean. If you don't mean it, we better not say it. Yes, sir. Words are powerful. Yes, sir. Amen. You can't get them back. That's true, brother. And we're going to give an account for every idle word that we speak. It's not to be our words. That's true. That's true. Amen. But it's to be words. Amen. That's directed and guided of him as he guides our mind and he guides our thoughts. We belong to him. We are not our own. Amen. Would you stand with us tonight? Somebody would come to the piano. Amen. How long has it been? Amen. Since you have offered a fresh, your body, a living sacrifice. How long has it been since you gave your car to God, since you gave your clothes to God, since you gave your attitudes to God, since you gave, amen, every possession that you have, you've given it to God, God, it's not mine, amen, I belong to you, I'm yours, do with me as you will, whatever you want, God, I trust you, amen, our time is not our own, you don't belong to yourself, you've been purchased by by the precious blood yeah. and he said it's just our reasonable service to give it all back yes. to him yes. so I want to ask us tonight if we would just make an altar to make a living sacrifice and give it all to God don't hold nothing back amen let's find a place sacrifice afresh our lives our future our expectations, our desire, our will. If you hold anything back, that's idolatry. The Bible says no idolatry to inherit the kingdom of God. You can't hold anything back. You can't get attached to the things of this life. 